Getting robbed was how I met my connect in Baltimore. What does that mean? How did this work? Let's go. K Rugs, the sober dog coming at you. Remember, Sober Dogs does not promote or condone any drug use. Please seek professional medical help if you have an addiction. I want to thank Jane Munt, Patreon of the Week. Jane, you are the best. Thank you so much. Anybody else who wants to become a patron, check out the link in the description. So I got a comment from somebody. How did you get started using in Baltimore and what was that like? When I moved to Baltimore, the plant, so I was in Rochester, New York, where I live and where I'm from, and doing bad, not doing good, you know, getting getting fired from jobs, full-blown addiction. I had a couple of buddies from college who worked for a life insurance company. The, the company was based in Pittsburgh, but had offices in like a couple different states, Baltimore, West Virginia, uh, I think maybe Ohio, a couple more in, Pitt, in Pennsylvania. So they were in Baltimore. They just opened this new office. They're my buddies. They're, they're good guys. They're not drug users. They're good people. And they're like, you know, let me know, like, dude, anytime you want to come down and work, we got you. We got a place to live. We got hours. You'll make money, blah, blah, blah. So my brain is like, okay, the geographical cure. If I just get out of Rochester, where I know the dealers and the streets I could use on and all the negative stuff, the people, I'll be good. So I moved to Baltimore and, you know, live with my buddies down there. And again, they're good guys. They're good influences. Don't get me wrong. On a Saturday night, they like to, you know, go down to the bars and, and, and have a couple drinks. But uh, besides that, they're not, they're very, you know, they're good. They're good people. I go down there and, you know, do the pretty much dead sober, not by choice kind of, but like, I got to do this. And I brought some Suboxone with me and I was taking that. So for the first month, I'm okay. I mean, I had a couple of drinks with them here and there, you know, so I'm not sober, but I'm not using dope and opioids and all that. I end up sitting, we sold life insurance. So I end up sitting, when we sit with people and sell them their life insurance, if they, you know, want it, we got to go through like this whole medical thing. Part of the medical thing, what medications do you take? I'm sitting with somebody, I don't know, it's, you know, two months into it. So, you know, maybe the hundredth person I've sat with. And this dude is just, the whole time, I know, I know the not out when I see a not out. So we get to the medication part and boom, there's just multiple things, you know, fired off opioids that are just ding, 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 ding in my head, oxy, Percocet, all these things. I tried to be professional and I was professional to whatever extent where I didn't say anything and I finished the insurance stuff. I mean, clearly this person had a problem. I shouldn't have put it through. Um, it didn't matter. It got canceled or rejected anyway. So I leave and the next day I go to that neighborhood and I'm hanging out right in front of this house waiting for the person to come outside because I figured that would be professional if I just saw them on the street. So I, I waited there for hours and hours and hours, nothing. Went back the following day, saw them outside, approached them and was like, yo, is there any way you'd sell me a couple, blah, blah, blah. This also is incredibly unprofessional. Imagine if your insurance agent came to your house two days later asking for drugs. Would you still want to get insurance through them? They ended up agreeing to it, um, a couple, with this really weird look on their face, but money talks. And again, I hadn't used in a couple months, so I had some money, so I could offer a little bit more than what was going rate. But by doing this, I plant a seed and I get my foot in the door of using in Baltimore. Then two days later, I go down to the hood and I just meet this, this dude on the corner that's selling that says he can get me stuff. So he does, gives me a number, call him back a couple days later, goes, yo, if you drive me to Washington DC and then back, I'll hook you up. I'll give you, you know, 60, 60 bucks worth of stuff for free plus whatever you want. So I'm like, all right, he just, he, he hooked me up two days before. So I take him to DC and back, which is like 45 minutes from Baltimore. And, um, you know, I give him, I think 40 bucks. So he's supposed to give me a hundred. So he gets out of the car, you know, I grab his shirt and I'm like, yo, what are you doing? And he's like, I got to go get it. I'm in desperation mode. I don't really, you know, I, I wasn't like full blown with drugs. I wasn't using daily yet, but whatever. Okay. And he used my phone right before that he gets out of the car. 15 minutes go by, you get that sinking feeling. I knew I got got. 
but you don't want to believe it. 20 minutes, 25. Then I park and I'm going in and out of these alleys and I'm looking for this kid and I'm on a mission. I walked by, you know, these crews of dudes, four or five dudes. Yo, where the fuck? And, I'm, and they're like, yo, gentlemen, he just got me. I'm going to rip his fucking head off. You know, I'm going nuts. And these dudes were just kind of like laughing like, so I get in my car, I'm searching for an hour, I can't find him. So I look at my phone and he cleared, he used my phone a couple times on the way down there. He cleared my, my calls because he knew he was going to get me, but he made one call after he cleared it. I called that number and I'm like, yo, so-and-so just got me. What the, where is he? I'm trying to get a hold of him. Dude on the other line, like as far as addiction goes, I couldn't have found a better person to answer that phone call. Dude is like, yo, I'm sorry. He's my son. He's an asshole. If you come meet me right now, I'll take care of you. You got any money left? So I go meet this dude who's got a huge heart and he hooks me up with a little bit extra plus a couple of bucks I had left. That in right there, meeting that one guy would end up being him and his wife were the two people I used with every single day for the next, you know, year of living in Baltimore. I would go and pick them up every day at 9, 10, 10, you know, a.m., take them to get the stuff. They would always do the dirty work and go in the alleys and go in the tester piles and go wherever because I'd give them a hundred bucks and I'd be like, all right, you guys each get one and give me, you know, give me my 10 back for 80. And we usually get 12 or 13 for a hundred bucks, something like that. And they each get one and they were fine, you know, with that. Cause every day they got a free one. There'd be days I had a little bit more money that I was generous, but then this was the, the big part. They had an apartment right on Lexington Avenue in Baltimore. So, you know, right in these little, these little project things, they would, you know, you can sit at our apartment all day and do whatever the hell you want. Boom. I got a place to chill in Baltimore all day during appointments or whatever. And it started, I'd go there during appointments, get high, hang out with them for a minute and leave. And then it turned into, I wasn't even going to appointments. I'd go pick them up at 10, go back to their place, stay there all day until 8 PM and then drive back to our apartment a little bit South of Baltimore. And you know, Oh, I was at appointments all day but not, not selling anything and not making any money. And that's where things really started to go down. But by this kid, Jack and me, I ended up meeting somebody. It could have been one of the worst people for my addictions. Not that it's their fault at all. It's just how it played out.